Anderson Cooper 360, weeknights at 8 and 10 on CNN. Though a symbol to many, the hooded sweatshirt Trayvon Martin wore the night he was killed is also a key piece of evidence. A state expert said he found no trace of George Zimmerman's DNA on that sweatshirt, not even on the sleeves or cuffs nearest to the fists the defendant says Trayvon Martin was hitting him with. And no Zimmerman DNA was found under Martin's fingernails. And what about Martin's DNA? Was it found on the gun, which by one Zimmerman account, the teen actually reached for and touched? Swab or the DNA that you developed from the pistol grip of the defendant's gun, it was positive for blood, correct? Yes. And then there was a mixture. The major was matched the defendant, George Zimmerman. Yes. And you were able to exclude Trayvon Martin as having DNA on the pistol grip, is that correct? Yes, Trayvon Martin was excluded as being a possible contributor to this mixture on the grip. The hoodie was also tested by a firearms expert who said Zimmerman's gun was actually touching the fabric when he fired the fatal shot. What did you find uh, distance-wise when you conducted the test with this particular switcher? This as well was consistent with residues and physical effects of a contact shot. So again, um, evidencing that the end of the gun was against the material when it was fired? Yes. The prosecution also pointed out the night he killed Martin, Zimmerman carried a fully loaded weapon with an additional round chambered and ready to fire. But on cross-examination, the defense got the witness to admit that was not out of the ordinary. That's you did right. not consider that to be an unusual occurrence, certainly, no. did you? Earlier, the state was out to show that Zimmerman did not just want to be a cop. He was trying to learn how to become one, studying criminal justice at a local college. How are you doing, George? On the stand, a former professor described Zimmerman as one of his best students and said he gave him an A. Zimmerman has said he knew nothing of Florida Stand Your Ground law the night he killed Martin. But the professor said the topic was a frequent source of discussion in class. I wanted to teach the class from a practical standpoint where these students can really relate and take something from it and apply it to their own lives. Uh, you know, with Florida and other uh, states, they have what's called the uh, Stand Your Ground uh, law, which evolved from the Castle Doctrine through case law. And did you cover that specifically? Yes. Did you discuss specifically self-defense and stand your ground laws in the connection of violent crimes such as murder? Yes. It was the testimony of another professor that provided one of the trial's few lighter moments. Unable to testify in person, Gordon Pleasance appeared in court by a Skype. Speak again. I, I can't hear you though, that's... First there were sound problems, but then came the digital demons. Is that his phone that's getting... Uh, it's, 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 it's someone calling the destination. As Pleasant's face and name were carried on national TV, people appeared to begin purposely calling him, disrupting the testimony. A frustrated judge ordered the video call stopped, with the defense finally catching on to what was happening. There's now a really good chance that we're being toyed with. In court, the judge announced the state had planned arrest. That didn't happen, and now won't happen until at least Friday, after the 4th of July holiday. Martin Savage, CNN, Sanford, Florida.